Welcome to the Massacre Matinee. Stick around to the end of the episode for some channel updates. You mean I'm allowed to do the intro all You're by myself? You're allowed to do the intro all by yourself. Welcome back. Welcome back. To part two of Ed Kemper. Yeah. So in the last one, we talked about Ed Kemper's history and why he kind of became a little, a little crazy. Oh, a little crazy. Uh, this time we're going to talk about his murders. Yes. His first and second murders kind of happened at the same time because, you know, his method of getting girls was picking up hitchhikers. So May 7th, 1972, Ed was driving in Berkeley when he picked up two 18-year-old girls. Okay. Hitchhiking. Who were hitchhiking, yeah. They were from Fresno State University. They both went there. Same okay. school. Um, their names were Mary Ann and Anita Mary. They both had asked to be brought to Stanford U- University. Um, it was kind of common for, in this era, for people to be hitchhiking because, you know, they didn't have cars. Mm-hmm. It was just, like, the easiest way to get to and from different universities in the city and whatnot. And at this time, they didn't really have the term serial killer. There wasn't really anything that they knew of that was like that. They didn't see the danger in it. Okay. After driving for an hour. So, I guess I have to give a little bit of context. So, he, in this area that he lived in with his mom because he lived in you know this big college town and everything like that he worked with this like construction kind of company so he was in the woods a lot and like knew the area knew the highways okay he he just knew the area like the back of his hand okay and he managed to reach a secluded area near the town that uh and he was like you know pretty familiar with it from his job and whatnot and he was able to drive in a way to where the girls didn't really realize the direction like he had changed complete opposite directions to stanford and whatnot cause he and just, they didn't realize it they, they didn't realize like, it because oh. he was you know keeping up conversation and mm-hmm. whatnot he then pulled over and handcuffed marianne and then locked anita in the truck the trunk sorry he stabbed and strangled marianne and then rinse and repeat to Anita. Ed later said that while he was handcuffing Mary, he accidentally brushed the back of his hand against her, like, boob. And he Oops. apologized to her for doing that. He's like, oh, whoops, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> and, like, actually apologized for touching her inappropriately while fucking handcuffing her <laughs> before stabbing and killing and strangling her. He put both bodies in the back of the trunk, and then he went back to his apartment, where he had a roommate, because he was still with his roommate. Hmm. And And their bodies are just chilling in the trunk? Yeah. And while he was on his way to his apartment, he got pulled over by the police for an out taillight. But he was kind of buddy-buddy with everyone on the police force, because he wanted to be a part of it. And one of his friends had become a police officer from this town. And he, like, when he first became a police officer, um, showed off his cop car. Like, this friend even tried to get him to try to, you know, go back into the police force. But at this point, they kind of, like, looked into it. And, like, the police knew Mm -hmm. at this point that he had killed his grandparents. So, like, obviously, he couldn't go that route if he wanted to. Right. Um... When, you know, the cop let him off with, you know, one of those fix-it tickets, and he went on his way, went back to his apartment, and he photographed the dead bodies. He had sex with them. Necrophilia. Yeah. Nice. And then... Sarcasm. For the love of God. (laughs) I... I sometimes forget to actually add the sarcasm to something oh, when yeah. I intend it when you're, so, when you're so good at sarcasm, people think that you're fucking serious. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then he dismembered them. Uh, he put the body parts in plastic bags, and he dumped them on the side of a mountain. Uh, the uh, Loma... Prieta Mountain? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. We're here. Yeah, I see it. <laughs> Lo- Loma Prieta. Yeah. Close enough. 
Yeah. But he kept the head separate. Why? Did he ever give a reason for that? Because he, he said that the prettiest part of a woman was her head. That makes me uncomfortable. Because it could have been so much worse because he could have been like, oh, I'm going to be like the Chicago Rippers. I'm going to keep a breast because that's the prettiest. Before dumping the heads, he had sex with them. Well, if, if that's the only part that he found pretty. Yeah, he kind of like mouth fucked the heads. Forced oral. There's actually a fucking word for it. It probably it falls under oh the God. necrophilia spectrum. We're playing spectrum. the game on it. We're playing the game. We're playing the game. Irumashio? Irumashio. Yeah. It is the name for... It's different from fellatio. Forced oral sex? It's No, it's just mouth fucking. So it, it, instead of the female doing the stuff, it is the male oh, like holding in. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. And then September 14th, 1972, he, he picks up a 15-year-old dance student named Akio. He drove to the same wooded area, <clears throat> locked himself out of the car on purpose. Purposely locked himself out of the car. So he could be like, oh, help me. After, I think he... I'm a damsel in distress at six foot nine. <laughs> I think with her, he was acting like he was going to commit suicide. Okay. And tried to get her to help him or whatnot, trying to use that. I, I, at this point, I think he's trying to figure Take out different tactics to get people in the cars. Okay. And Akio lets him back inside. Even though, like, she can see the gun that he has inside. So at this point, she must have not seen him as a threat more okay. so of someone that needs help kind of a thing for her to unlock the doors and let him back inside. Um, once back inside, Ed strangles her, but only until she was unconscious. He then raped her, and then after he was done, strangled her to death. Okay. And took her back to his apartment, took photos of it, had sex with the body, decapitated and dismembered her, had sex with the head dumped the bodies relatively close together. January 7th, 1973. He moved back in with his mom at this point. He wasn't living at that apartment. Which you'd think would be a big fucking no-no. Mm -hmm. He was driving around the college that she worked at when he picked up a girl named Cindy Shaw. And then he kind of changed his MO a bit. He had shot her with a twenty-two pistol. That's different. Yep. Yeah. Put her body into his trunk, went home, hid her body in his closet. Then the next morning, had sex with the body, removed the bullet from her, then dismembered her, and put her in his mother's tub. Then disposed of the body after, you know, rinse and repeat the normal way that mm. you would do, taking the pictures and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And then dumped the body in the same area. Though, I think this... I don't remember which victim it was, but I think it might have been this victim where he buried her head in his mother's garden. Okay. But he removed her face from the skull, put the skull facing his mother's window, but made the face sitting higher up on the skull so it was looking up so someone was always looking up to him. That's... But someone was always watching his mother that was dead. So it was a weird, um, weird. symbolism and everything yeah. like that that he did. Before he had did that, though, it was several days before he buried it. And he would, like, regularly have sex with it and whatnot. And then he would... Over the course of a few days. Over the course of a few days. to get gross. Yeah, and then he buried it. February 5th. So he has a good chunk of time between doing this. It seems like he's he's spacing it out like it gratifies him for a while and then he just gets an urge again. It, it kind of just seems like I think someone corresponded it to times when he was having arguments with his mom. Ah, okay. And he would go out and want to do that. Okay. But that's uh, that wasn't confirmed. I couldn't find anywhere it that was just said a that. Theory. It was just kind of a theory of why he would do it, but he never... Um, he admitted to he was killing because of his mom but he didn't say if it was because of the individual fights right if they didn't line up, up with arguments yeah. kind of thing 
So February 5th, 1973, after an argument with his mom, this one was, Ed picked up two women and they were named Rosalind and Allison. He shot both of them, wrapped their bodies up in a blanket. He brought the bodies back to his home. He dismembered them, removed the bullets, had sexual intercourse with them. And then the next morning, he dumped the remains with the others. At this point, the first victims had been found by hikers, but they only found the heads. And they were so decomposed, it was just the bones, so they had no idea Mm -hmm. if it was a male or a female. Like, they couldn't tell, because you can't really tell from a skull if it's a male or a female. Well, you can if you're, like, a forensic anthropologist, but... Yeah, but back in this time, they didn't really... Yeah, those weren't huge things at that point. No. They didn't... They didn't have a whole lot to go off of. Right. Those were the last of his co-eds that he killed. So, he only did a handful, and at this point, he was kind of kind of over it he's like you know what i'm tired of running away from the source okay april 20th 1973 kemper was woken up by his mom coming home from a party you know she coming home from a party she was how old i don't know if it was 73 and he was born in 49 right 48 48 so how old would that put him like 25 Mm, yeah give or take Okay, so she was maybe 40, 50 at her mm-hmm. oldest. And she never remarried. Okay. There was times where, like, he would pick her up from work and people thought that, like, he was just some fucking creep picking her up and everything like that. And she's like, oh, that's just my son. Like, <laughs> And they're looking up and up and, yeah, up and up to look him in the face and they're like, that came out of you, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I'm 13 pounds. <laughs> still can't get over the 13 pounds talk about getting ripped in half why would you want to have another kid after that the last one probably just walked out out. (laughs) (laughs) so he walked into his mother's bedroom and she was just you know sitting in bed reading a book and when she saw Ed come she's like well i suppose you're gonna want to stay up all night and talk now huh and he's just like oh no Uh, good night and walked away and he sat in his room and he waited for the like the signs that he knew that she had went to bed and she was asleep he went back into her room and he brought a claw hammer with her and he bludgeoned with her with him i'm sorry it's, it's okay. okay and he bludgeoned her and he bludgeoned her he beat her to death with it i don't necessarily know if it's a detail that would be found but in my own sword weird weird one way I, I gotta know like did he hit her with the claw or did he hit her with the head of the hammer I want to say a mixture because I feel like which side you use kind of shows like what you're feeling at the time if that oh, makes dude, sense oh dude if you're pissed pissed it's the it's claw it's the claw yeah maybe, maybe it's a mild form of psychology that would like determine something like what the reasoning for things like that are but he didn't damage her face too much though um he also slit her throat with a pen knife I feel like that probably wouldn't have been that easy. No. He um, decapitated her. And then... Did he use the pen knife? Probably. That would have taken... Fr- well, actually, with as many people as he's decapitated at that point, he's oh, probably, he probably like, knows out how to get in between the bones. Mm-hmm. And he... And I have this in quotations because he didn't really... Go it, he, well, he, it's confirmed, but he didn't go into detail of what he did. But he humiliated, humiliated, hum- hu- humiliated. There we go. Thank you. I You're welcome. Humiliated her head. He stated that he put her head on a shelf and he screamed at it for so long that his voice got raw. Um, but he was satisfied. He threw darts at her head, and then like smashed her nose and stuff like that in and whatnot he then cut out her tongue and her larynx and put them in the garbage disposal but the esophagus was kind of hanging out so he took like her whole throat and like just put it all right in there and put it into the garbage disposal but the disposal like wouldn't break the matter down and then like spit it back up into the sink and he said that that was really fitting because she was always bitching and screaming at him that even in death it wouldn't stop Hmm. he then said that he um he face fucked his own mom's head after cutting her tongue out and everything like that 
I don't know how to feel about that. Because first of all, you know, it's a decapitated head, but it's his it's own hard, mom's it's head. It's hard to say. I mean, it's fucked up all the same. Even if it wasn't his mom's head, it would be fucked up. Oh, yeah. But it makes you wonder if he did the face fucking to his mom just because he had already done that with the other decapitated heads. Mm-hmm. Or Unless it was in his brain. Oh, this will or shut her up because her mouth's if he full. decapitated and face fucked those other girls because that's what he wanted to do to his mom yeah because he said everything that stemmed was like of him killing the other women was because of the fact that he wanted to do that to his mom but it, it's kind of an alleged thing there's only been a couple of sources that said that he did that i like to think that he probably did he hid her body and her head like in a closet okay and then he invited his mother's best friend over. Mm-hmm. And her name was Sal- uh, Sarah Taylor, but she went by Sally. She was only 59. You said was. Was. She just made it through the door when Ed turned around and strangled her to death. He did that only for the fact to create an alibi because they would often go on like week long vacations with each other. Mm-hmm. So he did that as a way to, if he wanted to get out of the state, to have an alibi of where his mom would be for a week okay. before someone was like, oh, she's n- missing. Didn't see anywhere. He didn't do any of the other kind of killings. Like he didn't decapitate her, he didn't do anything with her. He just simply strangled her and hid her body with his mom's. So he didn't. So there's feel a anything drastic change, her. yeah, between him finishing out what he deemed as his end of killing to him killing Sally, and was just like, did it in the least. That's the difference between torturous. I want to say like he didn't yeah. mutilate her body and whatnot. So it's it's crazy to think like how different his mentality was on it. That seems to be the the difference between killing out of rage or Mm -hmm. revenge versus killing for the purpose of creating a story for uh, for, uh, killing for self-preservation. Right. Um, at approximately five 15 AM, he left a note that police later found that said at five 15 a.m. Saturday. No need for her to suffer anymore at the hands of this horrible, murderous butcher. It was quick, asleep, the way I wanted it. Not sloppy and incomplete, gents. Just a lack of time. I got things to do. Hmm. And that was his confession note that he left for police. But he kind of freaked out and he kind of got into this mindset that there was going to be a manhunt for him. Because at this point, he thought police already knew that he was the co-ed killer. Okay. So he drove over a thousand miles away to Colorado. He had three guns and hundreds of rounds of ammunition thinking that he was going to have to go out in like a fucking big old shootout and everything Mm. like that. Because he thought he had like all these fucking people after him. Right. After not hearing anything about his mother's death and realized, oh, they're not, in fact, after me. They have no idea at all. He called the fucking police and he spoke with an officer and he said what he did. And the person knew who he was and said, you know what, Ed, it's too late for this. Call back in the morning Hmm. and hung up on him. And Ed fucking waited and he called back in the morning. Oh, my God. (laughs) And... At this point, the dispatcher put him on the phone with his friend who showed off that he became a police officer. And he confessed to his fucking friend that he killed his mom and that he killed all these other women. Huh. And when asked why he turned himself in, he said the original purpose was gone. It wasn't serving any physical or, like, real emotional purpose. It was a waste of time to him and he couldn't handle it any longer. And then toward the end, he started feeling, like, the folly of the whole thing, and he was at the point of exhaustion, so he was just like, you know what, fuck it, and called off killing and whatnot after his mom. So he just saw no fucking- Okay. After he killed his mom, he saw no fucking point. Right. Job complete. I'm done now. Yeah, he's like, fuck it. Like, I'm so tired of doing this. Like, it's not giving me any pleasure anymore. Like, what's the point? 
He was then indicted on eight counts of first degree murder on May 7th, 1973. So like a full year. Even though he fully admitted to everything. Yeah. A full year after he first started killing. Because I think the first one was on May 7th, 1972. Okay. And his counsel wanted to plead insanity and everything like that. But because Kemper had tried to commit suicide two times before the trial... So they were like, okay, well, he's clearly insane. But it's the fact that he, one, hid the bodies. He knew exactly what he was doing, and he was, like, trying to evade arrest, and he, you know, tried to make an alibi for his mother and everything like that. So it's because of that that he knew and had that self-preservation and everything like that. They were like, okay, you're not insane criminally. Mm -hmm. Insane mentally, yeah, probably. Probably. But they wanted to get more information out of him, because at this point, they're like, he's interesting because he's so open about stuff but they wanted to get a little bit more out of him okay so one of the psychologists that were kind of trying to deem him if he was you know fit for trial and whatnot used truth serum on him because this was you know (laughs) during the whole time after you know mk ultra happened and they're trying to figure out truth serums and when they thought that cannabis was going to be this big like they got him (laughs) they're going to Make oh my no. god I've, <laughs> I've been using truth serum this entire time no truth serum's like a fucking sodium based kind of thing right. but mk ultra <laughs> dude i w- would love to do a thing on mk ultra they literally thought that giving soldiers weed would make them super soldiers and then they just got a whole bunch of fucking couch potatoes so <laughs> yeah and then they got into like cocaine and all that kind of shit it's you got to look into mk ultra it's fucking crazy i have last podcast i left is a really good job on that so they give him truth serum, and while he's under truth serum, like, he, he sounds completely different. He had said that he had cut, like, some thigh flesh and baked it into a casserole and everything like that. But then when he was out of the truth serum, he said that he never actually did any kind of cannibalism and everything like that. So he never, like, they never explored that more because they couldn't, they, they couldn't tell if it was true or not. Almost makes you wonder, like... Maybe he wanted to, but he was afraid to. Mm -hmm. It's entirely possible that he did. And when he was like out of the serum, he was like, no, I didn't because he thought they were going to charge him with cannibalism. I'm wondering if he just wanted to make him because obviously true serum doesn't work. Did Um, he make him want to make them think think he he was was worse worse? than he was? Right. That's what I'm thinking. Like, maybe he's just like, I'm already this monster. Let's make him think I'm like worse of a monster because this is before full send yeah because this is before Dahmer Mm -hmm. so they didn't really do anything because he redacted that statement and everything like that he didn't get the plea of insanity and when they were he was when he was found guilty and they were doing the sentencing he pleaded like he wanted the death penalty for himself Hmm. but he wanted to be well I suppose he didn't really feel like his life had any more purpose yeah but he wanted death by torture Oh, my lord. <laughs> it all comes back to his childhood. Yeah. I just want to be electrocuted. Yeah, he he wanted to be tortured to death, and um, he didn't get it because in California, they had like a suspension and death penalty and whatnot. Mm. So he ended up serving, uh, he's serving eight life sentences for the first few times where... He was able to do parole because I think I think California is one of those states where you have a minimum amount of years that quotes counts as your life sentence. Okay. I think it's generally like twenty five years, and then you're eligible for parole. But most of the time, they don't get parole, so then they like just kind of keep going through the cycle. Okay. His first parole hearing, he denied because he said he was happy in prison, and then it kind of he kept flip flopping between wanting to have a parole hearing and then having the parole like not having the parole hearing and like obviously each time he was denied Mm -hmm. he was actually i had it wrong it wasn't gacy that i had said earlier he uh, was in the same prison block as charles manson and herbert mullen and i want to do herbert mullen because he he was killing in the same area at the same time as ed and people actually thought that that the killings he, were connected? Or? That Herbert was the one doing all of the killings. Oh. And they didn't that's why that I think the co ed killings were a separate case? Yeah, well, because you had the ones that were just being strangled and decapitated, and then all of the other victims were shot. Ed started going to shooting once he saw that Herbert had 
shot all of his victims, but all of his victims, he was fucking coked out and everything like that and shooting mm-hmm. for drugs and whatnot. So they all thought, well, here's these shot victims. Here's these strangled victims. Eh, maybe we can't put these on Herbert and whatnot. In prison, Ed really fucking hated Herbert and like would try to manipulate him and everything like that and call them Herbie and everything. Yeah. And between him and tr- fucking Charles Manson, they fucked with this Herbert Herbert dude. And, like, just fucking broke him down mentally because they were oh, both fucking, geez. like, speaking. Like, they're in, like, the same three fucking cells. So they just bullied the <laughs> fuck out of yeah, him. Yeah, these two fucking dudes bullied the fuck out of this dude. A, a brief excerpt about Herbert. Kemper manipulated and physically intimidated Mullen, who, like, you know, Kemper was literally a foot taller than this dude. Okay. Because Herbert was only five, five nine. Um... Kemper was 6'9". <laughs> Kemper stated that Herbert had a habit of singing and bothering people when somebody tried to watch TV, so he threw water on him to shut him up. And then when he was a good boy, he'd give him peanuts. Herbie uh, liked peanuts. Uh, and that was effective, and pretty soon he asked permission to sing and literally said, Kemper said, he had learned that from his time when he was serving for his grandparents Mm -hmm. murderers because it's called behavior modification treatment so he was treating him like a pet yeah so he was treating this fucker to not sing when people are trying to watch tv and if he was good he'd fucking treat him like a dog and like here's your peanuts because of shit that he learned while working with the psychiatrist when he was serving time at that mental institution well goddamn (laughs) So, like, everything comes fucking full circle with this dude. When he was serving time, there was this, I think it was this church group that wanted to get prisoners to do productive things and whatnot. So, they were recording audiobooks with a okay. lot of the prisoners. So, you can hear, I don't know which ones, You easy Google search, but you can hear Ed Kemper record, I think it's like Of Mice and Men is one of them or some shit hmm. like that too, and hear him read you a fucking book and i don't think i could do that i don't think i'd be able to either. <laughs> i think another church group when and his last videotape interview he was basically saying how he was saved by god and whatnot and you know the whole spiel mm-hmm. and if you just saw the video of him and you had no idea what he did you'd be like okay this is like a dude that's like legitimately trying to turn his life around he's chill mm-hmm. giving up some paul blart fucking <laughs> Yeah. He lied with the mustache and everything like that, though. He recorded like 5,000 hours of audio for those books, by the way. Because they were doing it for, they were, um, it was a charity program for like the visually impaired. So there's a lot of fucking audio books with Ed Kemper's voice. Oh, shit. Yeah. However, in 2015, he had a stroke and was declared medically disabled, and that kind of changed him. He, at that point, he stopped talking to anybody, didn't want to do any interviews, and just kind of shut down, and was just wanting to live his own life. Um, in 2016, he received his first rules violation. So he was a good fucking noodle until he was just like, I don't want to give a piss test. <laughs> so I bet he fucking tried, like, weed once or some shit like that right. in prison. It was just like, oh, fuck. Right. <laughs> And you don't hear anything else about him other than the fact that he is eligible for parole next year. Otherwise, he's just been keeping his head down in prison, just living his life. Mm -hmm. I think he's in his 70s or something like that now. So I don't think he's he's not going to get out of prison. And I don't think I honestly personally believe that he's going to deny this parole hearing. I don't think he'd be able to live in a world outside of prison with how much the world has changed. Anyway. Oh, yeah. going He went into prison before fucking cell phones were a thing. Yeah. <laughs> so could you imagine coming out and like now you have smartphones, you have like all of this different shit. And like obviously prisons do keep people up to date because, you know, prisons change and within, whatnot. But they're within not. Within reason. Right. But I mean, it's not like they've all got iPads and shit running all oh, over yeah. the place on Facebook. Oh, accounts. dude, some I mean, fucking some prisons do. give them iPads and they have some TikTok do. access yeah. and shit like that. Which is ridiculous. I'm sorry, but that's not. Oh, uh, like that one fucking camp that's by us where they get to go ice fishing in the winter and whatnot. Is the fish that they collect going to feed the prisoners? I don't know. Because if, if the fish that they catch goes towards like that meal or whatever, I'm totally down for it. Whatevs. 
it because that's a little bit less tax money that's coming out yeah. of my pocket to pay for the meals. So that was Ed Kemper. I could have gone into like more detail of what he did to the people, but it did seem did like it was kind of the same thing it was the for same each thing victim, aside from the one that was just a strangulation. Mm-hmm. He he definitely had an MO. It's almost like right. he used the coeds to practice and make sure that he was ready so he would do it right when right. he got to his mom. And he just saw the opportunity. And, like, obviously, like, during that time, um, a lot of the people stopped hitchhiking. So it was harder for him to get victims. And I think that added to why it was so spread out. But it's, like, he he didn't really escalate because he just did the same thing over and over again. And it was just, it literally just built up to where I think he just got tired of it and just wanted to kill his mom and be over it. I can see it. So it's just... I wonder how different his life would be if his mom didn't treat him the way that they did and the divorce wasn't so sloppy and his dad didn't, you know, dupe him to stay with his grandparents and whatnot. Well, you see, that's just it, is if none of those things happened, he would have had a normal life. Mm-hmm. Like, I wonder and if he no would have actually have, become and no a police officer have known or whatnot. his name, you know? Like, mm-hmm. as weird as it sounds to say, no, it doesn't really sound that weird to say, it's the people that have the fucked up lives that... Are the most famous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's what's... It kind of sucks. <laughs> right. Like it's harder than hell to get a name for yourself out there, and this See, is this is gonna be me talking about like the podcast a little mm-hmm. bit. Like we've been working pretty hard on this podcast. We're keeping up with the schedule in way better of a way than I honestly thought was ever gonna happen. Oh like, yeah, I, I am ADD we... as fuck. I thought we were gonna be bored of this by now, <laughs> and I am so proud of us for still going. And we we're o- at over three hundred listens. Um, we're kind of hovering at around 76 or so active listeners per month at the moment. Hopefully that upkeeps. Hopefully that increases because if that hits 100, then we can open up the opportunity for things like subscriptions. So if people want to donate to the channel, we'll mm-hmm. be able to accept donations, which will help improve the equipment. Right, because that's the main thing and that we want to do. I don't think either one of us wants this to be our only job. Because that's how we get burnt out of this, like, really, really no, fast. No, no. And we do have um, big plans for the channel in the oh future. Yeah. We do. We, we discussed it a little bit. And uh, we think we are, in the future, going to open up uh, Wednesdays as an option mm-hmm. for cult-themed episodes. Mm-hmm. So it'll be about different types of cults. I um, want to do Jonestown so bad. <laughs> I know you do, and that's why we're opening this up. And we're also going to be... In the future, even farther after opening up Wednesdays for cults, Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to look into the possibility of doing Freaky Fridays for the paranormal. Right, because I don't want to get... Because if we just do, like, the murders and, like, the shootings and all of that kind of stuff, I don't want to say... Like, we're not going to run out of topics because sadly gonna, that's something that's gonna, gonna happen out, every day unfortunately but there was just another just shooting in maine i believe yesterday mm-hmm. so there, there's always going to be another case but it's, it's just the doing the same topics over and over again like i it's i've gotten to the to point where i can't even listen to true crime at work unless i'm researching something mm-hmm. and i don't want to get burnt out because i like doing this and i that's why i want to do like cults because cults are something in their own fucking right because jonestown like honestly you could probably add that to like a massacre kind of mm-hmm. thing because there's one dude that fucking murdered a shit ton of people essentially but it's also gonna bring in um more of an aspect to like charles manson and things like that mm-hmm. because there was the murder of sharon tate and that right. specifically is going to be its own episode but the entire backstory behind it with the full history of Charles Manson right. and his followers is all going to be a part of the cults episodes. Mm-hmm. And that'll probably be the one that like kicks us off because mm-hmm. that's going to be some of the more famous if, ones. If you hear the Charles Manson or the murder of Sharon Tate episode on Monday, I guarantee you that that following Wednesday is going to be the Charles Manson mm-hmm. cult episode. And that'll be our premiere. Right. And then like with that, obviously, if we're doing more, because 
we just record these like right after work Mm -hmm. on our Friday because we have a short day on Fridays. It's a short day. It's still a six hour day, but it's a short day. It's a shorter day. But episodes might not be as long just so then because obviously we're coming into the holiday season now with this. Mm -hmm. I'm also a hunter, deer hunter and everything like that. So maybe I'll be able to go sit with you in the stands. Yes, I would love for that to happen. If anything, I'll just be company for kind of the holiday season. Kind of expect shorter episodes or episodes that would normally be one long part, like an hour and a half. It's now going to probably end up being split up into different parts. Yes. Just so then we're able to enjoy our holiday season and not putting too much strain because I don't want to put too much strain on you, Ari, because, you know, you do. You work so hard on Saturdays to get these edited for Monday. And that's kind of why we were playing around with having multiple episodes, multiple episodes, especially for some of these bigger cases where mm-hmm. they've got the more information because then we can split it off. Uh, we were talking about this in between the two parts of this episode, actually, right. about in, in cases that are a lot more large, like Dahmer, for example, right. there's going to be a backstory Uh, part one backstory part two the killings part three the trial kind of thing to -hmm. make it a bit more in depth while still getting the full story across and then that way if people want to be like well i just want to hear about like i want to hear about his trial his trial or i just want to hear i don't want to hear about the killings because like that might be triggering i just want to hear his like um upcoming story Mm -hmm. and like about his upbringing and everything like that in the trial then you you can do that and we it's also going to help us out because mm-hmm. it'll make it easier for us to format our notes yes. so that we can know that this is going to be for this part, this is going to be for that part, this is going to be for that part kind of thing. And I just, I think it's so awesome to see how the channel is coming together now. Mm-hmm. Um, you you can tell, I I very frequently, I have multiple podcast listening to platforms, including mm-hmm. one that uh, we just got approached about not too long ago called Podbean. Um, it's, I've never heard of it before this, uh, but it's not actually that bad of a podcast service. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm not even sure how our podcast ended up on there. Did someone put it on there? I'm not sure. Um, Unless it's just an algorithm and like it goes through like Spotify or something like that. That might be. It is entirely possible, but I did create an account to make sure that, uh, we have ownership rights to, Mm -hmm. to that podcast being put up there because it's all done through like a RSS feed that through spotify for podcasters that's how i send everything out to the others so we we have we're on podbean now so i guess if if you listen to podbean cool if you don't you can actually check it out it's it's on apple and on android it's Mm -hmm. it's a neat little app there's there's actually a lot of different kinds of podcasts on there right like i'm I'm glad that we can be on so many different platforms because i know in the beginning we had a lot of people who used Apple Podcasts and they were questioning like, oh, like you're, oh, you're on Spotify. Like, can you go on Apple so then like we can listen to it? Mm-hmm. And it's just nice to have that. I'd feel like we're pretty all encompassed. We're we're on uh, Spotify, obviously, mm-hmm. uh, which also includes Spotify for podcasters. It used to be called Anchor FM, so it's technically a slightly different app. Yeah, we're on iHeartRadio, we're on Google Podcasts, we're on Apple Podcasts, and now we're on Podbean. So. Even for a small channel, I feel like we've got mm-hmm. pretty wide And I coverage. know th- uh, people, I know some coworkers, because a lot of our coworkers are our listeners, and I'm so grateful. I appreciate you. We're talking you. about like putting these up on YouTube, and I think that'll be more of a down the line. Yes, because kind that's of gonna thing. that's gonna take a lot more effort on my part, and mm-hmm. I'm the only techie in here. i am very much i do a lot of the designing for our stuff like i have a little image going where we have all of our um little mascots kind of sitting in a group it's so cute it's actually the picture for our podcast bitches group chat yes i love our group chat Um. so like Any, and anytime we get a guest host, they're gonna have an animal and they're gonna get added to that yeah. picture. So it's it's gonna be awesome. Mm-hmm. And we'll actually, I should snag that from you, and I will put that up on the Instagram. And then also, you know, like we got the new logo. I'm so happy with that. It I actually so made us our own personal little um, cups cups with our mm. logo on it, and it turned out so cute. We will take them to work every day. <laughs> 
so it's I got mean, me drinking more juice i really mm-hmm. needed that i appreciate the shit out of you <laughs> and i want to uh, like we'll do merch at some point but yes. we have to be a little bit bigger for merch to happen and yes. it's going to that's going to be a really big milestone for us because that's a lot of work that's a lot of um finding someone to produce said merch and whatnot and i think in order for us to reasonably offer significant merch Mm -hmm. like hats t-shirts kind of stuff we're gonna need at least a thousand followers not just just listeners but a thousand Mm -hmm. followers that being said smaller merch wouldn't necessarily be too much of an issue Mm -hmm. and you know since we don't really want to make money off of this for our own personal gain i mean obviously we want to get better equipment so we sound better and whatnot and this is just like a hobby for us so like if you know us personally and you want something from the podcast let us know let us know because i mean like you made us keychains yes and those were super duper simple it Mm -hmm. was only about an hour per keychain to 3d print right and like stickers for me so like if you want a vinyl sticker for your car or something like that Mm -hmm. like that's i do need to get a, a masker matinee mascot man for the Yes. For Jack Jack attack, mm-hmm. that's gonna need that. to be in a permanent black, so it has to go on the outside. Yes, and I won't put it on till spring. <laughs> yeah, so like, get a hold of us for that kind of stuff, Mother. That includes you. <laughs> yes, but I think this is good coming into the holiday season to really kind of update you guys on what's going to happen, and not to be surprised if shorter episodes and you see a couple 15 20 minute episodes or Mm -hmm. something like that just because we don't want to make things too stressful for ourselves Ooh. also don't remember what episode it was oh i think it was your calumet firehouse that we had the the italian hall disaster yeah that we had it that was um, episode two way back in the beginning of the podcast and your snack was pasties yes we're making some we're making i am making her (laughs) come help us (laughs) make a crap ton of pasties so she can see excuse (laughs) me i believe i demanded to be invited she wants to meet mother i have to meet mother her and mother's making authentic fucking pasties so we're gonna wrap this up (laughs) so we will see you guys next Next week week. Bye. bye